for some for, for someone who wants to or for those who want to start helping people and they may feel like they can't really help them because they financially is like low standard I'm finished I'm finna show y'all how y'all can help people regardless of how much you make how much your income is but as long as you got income, you are a blessing for somebody out there. So I'm going to show you how you can be a big help. With the blessing of God being a, a, a provider in your life. He's the provision of all things, right? So this is what you, this is what you should do if you want to help people. Now, I'm not trying to be militant about how to spend money and divide and subtract. I'm not doing all that. This is going to be simple. So when you get your check once a week, every two weeks, once a month, some people may get paid every day. However, whenever you get your check, always take like maybe 10% or whatever you just got paid. I don't care how much, I don't care if it was a dollar. Take 10% of whatever you just got paid, put it to the side. Shoebox, bank, or whatever, I don't know, I don't care. Get you a safe or whatever. Put it to the side and label that as a tithe. I ain't trying to lose y'all with that, just listen. Put it to the side and label it as a tithe. That's 10% off your paycheck. And you're going to take whatever you want whatever you want and put it to the side for a savings your savings can be a dollar i don't care but put something to the side as your savings shoebox bank safe whatever put something to the side for your savings i don't care how much it is i don't want to lose you when you first get your paycheck, I don't care if it's a social security check. This is how you can help people. When you first get it, always put 10% of whatever you just received to the side and label it as a tag. Take whatever you want. Also, out of this check, I don't care if it's a nickel, dollar, four dollars, nine dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars. Put it to the side for a savings. Now, you got whatever you left, whatever is left, you got to go take care of your business. Take care of whatever you need, bills, miscellaneous, whatever, with that check. <clears throat> so now you got ties and you got your savings. Next pay period, next month, or whatever, do the same thing over and over, over and over. Now, here's the key. To helping people in the future. <clears throat> that time. As you're constantly. Doing what I was advising. Like 10% every month. Every month. Do not touch it. Your savings is for an emergency. Your savings is for like. If your check came late. Or if they mess your check up. Or if something had to happen. And you needed an emergency or whatever. That's what the savings is for. Your savings is just in case. That's why it's saved. Put it up. It's not, oh, well, you know, if I overspend my main money, my check, or whatever, if I overspend, I'm just going to easily dip over there. No, no. Yo, you, you spend your money that you got left. After you put your, your tithes and your savings up, the money that you had to pay your bills, you still should have something. You spend your money wise so you will not be needing to dip anywhere. You have to be a wise person on how to spend your money. Don't just spend because you got money saved and put up somewhere. You're going to be tempted to dip into that. So that's not what that's for. So you're going to always spend your money wisely. Whatever you got left to mingle with, spend that wisely. Don't touch your savings unless it's an emergency. So that's a conscious thing that you know that God is blessing you to put up. Now, the tithing, you don't touch, period. Not at all. That's the reason why you got your savings over there. So if you, boom, you put that gavel down saying, look, that's it. I'm not touching that. You know why? 
because that tithing is for the people you a you are about to help. Yep. That tithe that you constantly keep putting 10% in, you are putting that to a side to help. You're going to give that to somebody. Somebody going to need it. Check it out. Let's say you've been doing that for about a year now without touching it, without touching the task. You ain't touch a damn of it because God's blessing on that. God said do that. So you doing that, right? And I'm not talking about tithing that you give to the church, to pastors and them. No, I'm talking about that. You are a church. So you got God's blessing on that tithing account. So you know you can't touch it because that's robbing God if you do. <laughs> so this tithing right here is just in case somebody may need your help. Your savings, you just in case you need it. So you're not even worried about it. You still win-win. You know you can't touch the tithing because that's God's blessed. That's his money. And your savings, you know if you touch that, that's when you're going to run drafts so, on. So you disciplining yourself with that. Whatever. A year later... You got, uh, let's just say, like, you've you, uh, been blessed to develop, like, $500. Because, like I said, it depends on your 10% that you're putting in. So, I'm just going to say you end up getting up to $500 with this tag. You, your tag may be more than your savings. Because your savings is whatever you decide to put in there. But your tag is 10%. So, let's just say you got $500 within that year. Maybe more than that. You're walking down the street, you at work, at school or whatever, you know what I'm saying, or in your place of residence or whatever. So, somebody, like, you know, having problems or whatever, you see a lady over there with her kids and she crying or whatever, and you know of her, not really know, but you know of her, and y'all talking and circumstances and stuff like that come about, you know, and next thing you know, Y'all talking and stuff, and you know she booing about circumstances, and like I said, you know of her or whatever, and you like, you know what's going on. She tell you that she may be behind in her rent. <laughs> you like whoa, and proof is in the pudding throughout the circumstance that she's explaining. Plus she's at the, the public aid office or whatever. I'm just saying when you know that it's true or whatever, you know she don't know what you doing or how blessed you are. You work at Mickey D's and you doing you. You know what I'm saying? Because God is in your life blessing you. So anyway, she may be behind like maybe like $200. $150 or whatever. And you like that she stressed me. I got these kids and I'm behind them already. They finna give me a 30. They finna kick me out. And I'm like, oh, what? What's going on? Well, how much you shot? Man, I'm just shocked. You know what I'm saying? Like $200. And I'm finna go. They finna kick me out. And you be like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Then, well, you know what? You know, let me talk to your landlord about it. Let's go over here, whatever. I'm just saying, you know, it could be anything. But anyway, you say, you know what? It, let me see if I can help you. Let me see if I can help you. You know what I'm saying? You know why? You got that in your head. You got that confidence that you can help her because God has led you to this little account over here that you've been saving money in his name that you've been putting to the side because God said put money to the side. You robbing him if you're touching it because he got you where you could be a blessing for somebody else. People not understanding that. So you take to pray about it, whatever, and you take two hundred dollars out that tithing account, make a money order out to it, whatever, give it to a landlord, or however you choose to do it. You know what I'm saying? The next thing you know, you can bless her to be able to get a rent paid. Somebody needs some shoes, and they looking crappy. They walking around with just a, a thing of they, but they look thing flapping off their shoes, and then you're like, "Whoa, hold on, you need some shoes." Come on, let's go over and make a cut or whatever. And then you out of nowhere blessing them to be able to get some shoes. I don't care. The shoes may be about $65. You got five to a thousand dollars in that tithing account. You can go easily buy some shoes with the confidence of not even being broke. Man, I wish I could help somebody. Boom, there it go. You didn't steal no money. You weren't tempted to steal no money out of that tithing. You was able to. You prayed about it. God got it there for you to help the next person. You are living in a giving life. 
not a get life. When God said help those who are in need, that's what you are doing. See, just because you work for McDonald's, UPS, FedEx, you just a barber or whatever. When you do the things that God leads you to do and you do it wisely, people are swept down that you some type of middle class act working somewhere on a dock and you see, people don't people don't have to know exactly what you're doing. All they know is that you are touched with God's blessing with his spirit and he's leading the guys and you and most of all he's blessing you with wisdom on how to manage your money and how to help people so i'm just saying you want to be able to help people you have to bless you have to bless others by being wise on how you spend your money so that's just the closest i can get by helping y'all with this type of advice if you, whatever check you're getting Put money to the side for tab. That tab is like could be also labeled as blessing others. When I said tab, I know I might have lost y'all. Like, oh, we talking about paying tab ten percent to the preachers, and no, that temp you are a church. If you are a believer of Christ, you are a follower of Christ. You know what I'm saying? You are anointed. You you chosen. You are the church. You obeying, you obeying the Sabbath, you doing right. So that's what you need to do. Be a giver from the heart. And that way you store up no treasures in heaven when you give to people. God is watching you give to those who lack. You're blessed. Quit sitting back complaining. All I do is flip burgers. All I do is just make such and such an hour. I don't have this much money where I could do this and do that and... I don't, uh, 20, people that make $50 an hour are miserable because they're not blessed with God's spirit. And doing what they want to do. They smoke and crack. They doing lines. They strip clubs and they giving it away. They ban all these expensive clothes, cars, and all this nonsense. They gambling. Come on, man. The person that's making $4, $4 an hour could be that person who just paid somebody card note for them. I just told you, once God is the provision of your life, you could be a huge blessing to somebody else. So when you get your check, put money to the side for tax, 10%. Don't be afraid to do that. And put whatever you want to put aside for savings. Don't touch that savings unless it's an emergency. And you know you can't touch the tithes. That tithing is for somebody else. And that tithing is, is definitely going to be stacking, stacking, stacking because you can't touch it unless somebody need the help. Now, you got to, if you get up to $2,000 with your tithes, don't look to help somebody because your money's stacking. No, you may need to take that $2,000 and go help somebody, your mama, your cousin, your daddy, or whatever. No, let it continue to stack and allow God to lead you to what he needs you to do with that money. I'm telling you, let it stack. Man, I get like almost $8,000 in this, in, in the, okay, so leave it alone. And when you're led to go in there and help somebody, it's there for you to help. <laughs> That's how you could be a big financial help to someone else, you all. That's, that's what I had to say. And I hope that kind of help, if not a whole lot, so... Stay up, Harbor.